it's not probably the most important part of this lecture comes and it's about FIR filter FIR filters so let's start again from our black box here so we've got our impulse response h of n so that's our filter so we know that that this can be implemented and we've got our x of n and we've got our y of n at the output and we know that this can be done with a convolution operation here in the sampled domain so we could do something like x of n convolved with h of n and we're getting y of n and we also know that if we want to have y of z then we just multiply x of z with h of z so we know also that so now how can we implement this filter here this, in this digital filter so how, how can we create a physical implementation of this so how to how to implement the filter in software so really as proper code and the the idea is very simple so we just so the idea is we use the definition of the Z transform of the transform for h of z we define our h of z with the help of the z transform so this was h of n multiplied by z2 minus n so that's our z transform of the impulse response of the impulse response h of n yeah so we do that and so now the second idea is now or the trick is so we multiply it with our signal yeah so remember we've got our box here so let's have this write this here as h of z write this here as a proper box like this and this is, was our x and this is our y signal here and so now what we can just write is h of z multiplied by x of z and then this is per definition here of our of our function here sum of n equals 0 to infinity h of n z to minus n and then this is x of z so now we just need to analyze this term here yeah so the so z2 minus n here that's a delay by n samples and this is our input signal and this here is essentially just a factor or factors in this case because it depends on the n so we know this is our impulse response so 
So with that, we have essentially a circuit diagram defined. This means here we have an infinite sum of these delayed input signals, and we're just adding them up by this factor, by this factor h of n, which is our impulse response. So we can directly draw a circuit diagram, basically, with that. Let's just write this here again, down here, because it's very important. So h of z multiplied by x of z. And then this is sum n equals 0 to infinity. And then this is here h of n. And then this is z to minus n. And then this is x of z. So this is our, and this is here our output y of z. So remember this was our our box here, h of z. And this is filtering our signal x and we're getting our signal y of z out there. So now this gives us a direct recipe of a data flow diagram here. So this, this here gives us a data flow diagram. Because remember here, so this was a delay, and this this delay acts on this x of z. So in other words, so if you go back to our sample domain here, then what we need to do is we need to create delay steps, and in this writing infinite number of delay steps. And then we take the undelayed version here and multiplying this here with h of 0. So we multiply this here by h of 0. Then we take the version delayed by one time step here and multiply this by h of 1. And then we multiply this here by h of 2. And we multiply this one here by h of 3. And so on and so on. And then what we do is, we just sum this up here and send this out here. And this is our output signal y of n. Let's just make nice arrows on this here. That is feeding into this here. And this obviously goes on forever in this definition here. So if we have a construction like this one here, this here, then this construction is called FIR filter. Let's redraw the FIR filter again. So FIR filter. So an FIR filter has delay steps by one sample. So that's a delay by one sample. And then what we do is we multiply this by h of 0, this here by h of 1, by h of 2. So these are all multiplications here. Multiplications here. This is our input signal x of n. So these are multiplied by these factors here. So they are all summed up and sent out as the output signal y of n. And these factors here, these h of n, this h of n, they are our impulse response of the filter. So 
So this means that in order to implement an FIR filter, we just need to know the sampled impulse response of our filter and then with this we are directly able to generate a simple FIR filter.